Hi, I'm Andrew Stevens, and we are all so excited to be associated with the film project, The Path to Glory. Now, personally, I am very proud to bring to the screen the story of arguably the greatest athlete the world has ever known, Jim Thorpe. In 1999, both houses of Congress of the United States recognized Jim Thorpe as the athlete of the century. And our film about his life is action-packed, compelling, inspirational, and so relevant to today's audiences. The Path to Glory is based on a screenplay by Academy Award-winning screenwriter Pamela Wallace, and we have a very strong production team, including award-winning composer and music supervisor Michael Lloyd. During my career, I've made over 175 movies, and of all of them, this is the one I'm most proud to be associated with. Olympic gold medalist in both the decathlon and the pentathlon, competing in 17 events. Collegiate national champion, NCAA All-American, National Football League Hall of Famer, professional baseball player, professional basketball player. Jim Thorpe mastered every sport he ever played, and he exemplifies the finest of the American spirit. But more than just an American hero, Jim Thorpe is one of the greatest Native American heroes of all times. So let's let our video speak for itself. In 1999, a joint resolution of Congress recognized one man as athlete of the century. It was not Babe Ruth or Lou Gehrig, Jesse Owens or Muhammad Ali. Instead, it was a man previously known to many, a Native American from Oklahoma named Jim Thorpe. In Oklahoma Territory in the late 1890s, Thorpe boarded a train and departed on a long journey to the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. His father's last words to him were, son, you're an Indian. I want you to show other races what an Indian can do. Jim Thorpe, named by his mother Wathohuk, meaning bright path, a Native American icon and a member of the Sac and Fox Nation is arguably the greatest athlete of all time. The Path to Glory is an inspirational motion picture epic that recounts Thorpe's struggle to overcome the cruel, identity-destroying environment of the Carlisle Indian Industrial School, whose motto was, kill the Indian, save the man. It was the time to educate the Indian to get him away from being a heathen, to learn to eat with a knife, fork, and spoon. It was not a comfortable existence for many of those homesick children, and quite frankly, Jim Thorpe was one of many Indian children who, when they got a chance, ran away. Coached to victory against all odds by the legendary pop Glenn Scobie Warner, Thorpe serves as an inspiration not only to his own people, but to underdogs everywhere. A young Thorpe, already showed impressive signs of exceptional athletic prowess. Already a track and field star at Carlisle, Jim Thorpe joined the U.S. Olympic delegation competing at the 1912 Summer Games in Stockholm, where he startled the world by destroying the world's greatest athletes in both the decathlon and the pentathlon, competing in 17 events and pulling off one of the most impressive feats in sporting history, Jim Thorpe who won every event in the pentathlon. He then went on to compete and win the first decathlon ever held. The decathlon was designed to epitomize the Olympic theme, Sidious, Altius, Fortius, swifter, higher, stronger. Jim Thorpe was so supreme, the second place finisher was more than 800 points behind, the greatest margin of victory in Olympic decathlon history. Jim became the only Olympic athlete in history to win gold medals in both the decathlon and pentathlon, competing in 17 events. As was the custom of the day, the medals were presented to the athletes during the closing ceremonies. But along with the two gold medals, Thorpe also earned two challenge prizes, one awarded by King Gustav V of Sweden for the decathlon, and the other awarded by Tsar Nicholas II of Russia for the pentathlon. At the game's closing ceremonies, King Gustav V told Jim Thorpe, Sir, you are the greatest athlete in the world, to which Thorpe reportedly replied, Thanks, King. Thorpe returned to the United States, and New York City gave him a hero's welcome with a Broadway ticker tape parade. 
Thorpe's final challenge before graduating from Carlisle was daunting, to lead his football team to the national championship. That challenge was to be decided at West Point Military Academy's Cullum Field. Army was the most powerful football team in the nation, led by Dwight David Eisenhower, future president of the United States, who was a 22-year-old star linebacker for West Point. The day before the big game, Thorpe and Eisenhower made a surprising, strong personal connection with each other as they sparred over who would be victorious. The brash but likable Ike boasted, tomorrow I'm gonna bring down the greatest athlete in the world. And unfazed, Jim Thorpe says, you can try, you can sure try. At halftime, Carlisle was utterly exhausted and crestfallen. In a brief but profoundly affecting speech, Pop Warner reminded them that their helpless, unresisting ancestors were slaughtered at Wounded Knee by the fathers and grandfathers of those West Point cadets. Moved to respond, Thorpe stood before his teammates and proclaimed, they're not better than us. The players began to chant this mantra with growing conviction, then stormed the field with fierce determination with an almost mythic effort by Thorpe. When Eisenhower and a teammate charged at Thorpe to deliver that knockout blow, the two linebackers collided violently and both were removed from the game. And Carlisle won, 27-6. A defeated but awestruck Dwight Eisenhower tells Jim Thorpe, you're the greatest player the world has ever known. Jim Thorpe excelled at every sport he played. He competed in track and field, football, baseball, basketball, lacrosse, hockey, golf, swimming, bowling, and wrestling. He even won the 1912 Intercollegiate Ballroom Dancing Championship. Thorpe is the only athlete in history to play three professional sports, football, baseball, and basketball. Thorpe played professional football with the Canton Bulldogs and became the NFL's first commissioner. In 2000, Jim Thorpe was awarded ABC's Wide World of Sports Athlete of the Century almost 50 years after his death. In honor of his outstanding achievements, the NCAA created the annual Jim Thorpe NCAA Award for Most Outstanding Defensive Back. In 2001, Wheaties put Jim Thorpe on their box. The United States Postal Service honored Jim Thorpe by putting his image on stamps. U.S. Senate Joint Resolution 73 proclaims April 16th Jim Thorpe Day, calling upon Americans to observe this day with national pride in honor of the greatest athlete of the 20th century, a man considered by many to be the greatest athlete of all time. In 1961, President Eisenhower said, here and there, there are many people who are supremely endowed. My memory goes back to Jim Thorpe. He never practiced in his life, and he could do anything better than any other football player I ever saw. Jim Thorpe was once quoted as saying, I am no more proud of my career as an athlete than I am of the fact that I am a direct descendant of the noble warrior, Chief Blackhawk. Well, you've just witnessed firsthand the extraordinary accomplishments of Jim Thorpe, an American and Native American icon. And for those of you who've previously known about Jim Thorpe, I hope you learned something more. And for those of you discovering Jim Thorpe for the first time, I trust you're as inspired by him as I am. We're asking for your support in making what we believe will be an important and award-winning film, a film that Native Americans and all Americans will be proud of. But we need your help. No contribution is too big or too small. So spread the word, tell your friends, and let's get this done together.